With Live Maps Research, we're exploring today how the world will be experienced tomorrow. So all of these technologies are being built to help people feel closer. We're building new VR headsets. We're building immersive experiences. We are building AR glasses, all to enable more frequent, more diverse, and stronger connections, to enable closeness. And with that, I'd like to introduce Stephanie Lou to the stage to share more about how we're building the best VR platform. Thank you. I can't wait to see what the future of AR and VR holds. Together, we're building that future. Over the years, we've been working nonstop to enable a sustainable ecosystem for you, our developers, and our users. Our VR headsets form the core of our ecosystem. Go is great for entertainment, while Rift X continues to unlock the most rich, immersive experiences. And Quest? What can I say? Quest is changing the game. You simply can't beat this combination of content, form factor, and price. We want to double down and unlock the hardware's true potential through our software innovations. So today, I'll share some updates that we've made to our core experiences along with improvements to our software, to our development features and tools. And finally, I'll talk about how we're pushing the bounds of what's possible in VR. Let's take a look. Since Quest launched, we've already incorporated many top user requests through our monthly updates, including more Guardian settings, casting support for Beat Saber, and the ability to launch apps straight from your phone so you can help guide a friend while they check out your quest. And that's just to name a few. We're not stopping there. We've got a ton of new stuff in the works, including one that's been a, one of your favorites on Rift S. I'm excited to share that an upgraded version of Passthrough, Passthrough Plus, will be available for Quest users starting next week. <laughs> Passthrough Plus gives you a comfortable, stereo-correct view of your surroundings while you're wearing the headset and it's useful for any time you step outside your play space. To make this possible on Quest, we've applied techniques from high-performance image processing and advanced 3D computation, resulting in a similar visual quality to what you'll see on Rift S. And what's even better, with Pass-Through On Demand shipping later this year, you can pull up Pass-Through Plus at any time. So the next time you hear your friend trying to steal your pizza off the kitchen counter, Turn on Pass-Through Plus to catch them in the act. Then get back to slicing pineapples in Fruit Ninja. Time and again, we've heard the community ask for this next feature. Oculus Go has been an entry point to VR for many people who then upgraded to Quest. We've heard from these VR fans and developers alike that there are tons of amazing Go apps that you'd love to experience on Quest. I'm pleased to announce that we're bringing a bunch of really, really popular Oculus Go apps to Quest. And there's more. We're also offering free upgrades. So owners of paid Go apps can get the Quest versions that already exist. If you own, say, Thumper on Go but never got around to buying it on Quest, between now and the end of the year, we'll upgrade you for free. Starting next week, there will be more than 50 of the most popular Oculus Go apps available to Quest users. So that's some pretty cool stuff, right? Now let's talk about some new tools for you, our dev community. We want to make it easier for you to develop amazing experiences, promote them for people to discover, and connect to more customers. You've shown that it's possible to build high-quality, performant VR apps on mobile chipset, and we are committed to making it easier by giving you more tools to profile and debug. We've contributed to RenderDoc, the open source frame debugger, so that it supports all of our extensions and uses less RAM. This means it will run more smoothly on Quest. We're also improving RenderDoc to record out performance data. And later this year, we'll be enhancing our OVR metrics tool, so you can see more metrics right in the headset while your application is running. Or you can view on a computer and save the information for later. 
We've also added support for Vulkan multi-view and fixed foveated rendering in our platform and in Unreal Engine. This can boost performance significantly. And later this year, we'll expand our Vulkan support to include on Quest to include Unity and Vulkan validation layers for easier debugging. And speaking of Unity, you may have seen that we've recently enabled Unity's GPU profiler on Quest and Go. We're also working with Qualcomm to develop a low-level GPU profiling API. This will give you more detailed information to increase accuracy in pinpointing and resolving performance issues. Now with all of this, our goal is to make it easier and faster for you to create the next generation of VR experiences. And once you've built an app, we want to help you more effectively reach your audience and understand how your app is performing. That's why, later this fall, we'll be adding purchase funnel metrics into our developer analytics dashboard, providing you new metrics on Quest to help you understand how your app is performing in the store. You'll be able to explore the dashboard to view conversions, as well as metrics related to browsing, searching, and engagement with your product detail page. Now you can measure the quality and impact of your art and product pitch, so you can test, refine, and improve. Another great way to promote your app, mixed reality capture for Quest. This lets you mix real life and VR footage into a single video. It's an awesome way to force and multiply your marketing efforts for your apps and get people really excited about VR. We recently, yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> we recently shipped the ability for you, our developers, to create these mixed reality videos. It's already supported in our Unity and Unreal integrations. And later this fall, we'll be adding native support, along with a tool to make it just as easy for content creators to be producing these mixed reality videos. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. We're also working on features that are good for customers and for you, by giving you the flexibility to reach and connect to a wider audience no matter what device you build on. You heard Mark talk about how we'll, build up, how we'll open up the ability to play Rift apps on Quest later this year. This is especially great for Rift developers who've been with us since the very beginning. Your reach extends when more people can access the content that you've created. It means you can build high-end PC experiences and also take advantage of the biggest possible market. Quest owners who have a gaming PC will have access to the deep library of stellar Rift content They'll have the best of both worlds, the best games from Rift when connected to a PC, and the portability of a Quest. Now, PC gamers who are deciding between Rift or Quest have even more options. Remote rendering is fantastic for development, too. You can iterate more quickly by running on a PC while streaming the output to your Quest. Simply hit the play button for the Unity or Unreal Oculus plugin and you'll be able to preview right on the device. No need to compile and transfer a new APK first. This is, yeah, I know. I'm excited about it. It's development at PC speed for a mobile device. Beyond what we're shipping today, we're also imagining, innovating, and building things for the future. Things like hand tracking, which will revolutionize input for VR. This is going to be a game changer. It will unlock new and intuitive interactions in your apps like never before. And we've all seen how truly magical it is when the hardware melts away and you can interact naturally in VR. We've pushed on engineering boundaries to unlock this capability that was previously on Quest that was previously thought to be impossible. And we're doing it just a few short months after Quest launched. Let's take a look at the computer vision magic that makes this all possible. Our hand tracking team has developed state-of-the-art methods of applying deep learning to understand the location and pose of your hands using just the onboard Quest cameras. No need for additional cameras, active depth sensors, or extra processors. Instead, we use model-based tracking and deep neural networks to accurately infer where your hands are and what they're doing, including exactly what your fingers are doing. And then we reconstruct those poses nearly instantly into the art. We're doing all of this in a mobile processor without compromising CPU or GPU. And we're also using our inclusive AI frameworks to
to test hand tracking for a wide range of people and environments. Early next year, we'll release a beta for Quest users, and we'll ship an SDK so that you can start unlocking these new interaction mechanics in your apps. With incredible software innovations like hand tracking, in an ever-growing ecosystem of people hungry for more VR experiences, we are just getting started, and we're so excited that you're with us. I can't wait to see what we'll build together. Now, to talk about how we're building our platform to be social at the core, here's Megan Fitzgerald. We all know that VR can enable meaningful connections. But there's still a ways to go until it's as easy, seamless, and fun as it should be to find and form communities in VR. To get there, we need to enable more ways for communities to form and grow, and more things for them to do and share. We think about this in three ways. First, social interaction should be possible across everything in VR. So we're building social features that let people connect, communicate, and share. Next, people need places to go and things to do. So we're building dedicated social places where you can meet people and find great new experiences. And finally, creators 